Oh. Damn it. <sighs> All right. Future 2021 Calgary housing market. Is there a storm ahead? Now in this video, I'm gonna go over a few key items. What drives real estate prices? The three challenges that the Alberta economy is facing, factors keeping the Alberta real estate market up, the catalyst if we go into a real estate market crash, and how the Calgary real estate market did in November and you're gonna be very surprised. I will have a tip for you at the end, which is how to get an idea of where the five-year fixed rates are going uh, so that you can determine what kind of mortgage option is the best for you. And I'm also gonna go through some super important advice for, especially for condo owners, thinking about selling, and just general advice for buyers and sellers to help you with your decision. So you wanna stick around for that. After all, who doesn't wanna see an elf giving real estate advice? If you're new to our channel, my name is Felix Chan, Calgary Realtor and Mortgage Broker. What drives real estate prices? The number one thing that drives real estate prices is GDP growth. Now GDP stands for gross domestic product, which is the total monetary and market value of all goods and services produced and it serves as a function of a country's economic health. So when GDP grows, it means that the economy is doing well. Now, how does that affect real estate? Well, when GDP grows, it means that jobs are being created. When jobs are being created, people migrate to Alberta. When they migrate to Alberta, they're gonna rent, which brings down the vacancy rate. And about 18 months later, it drives real estate prices to go up. So it is a lagging industry. So where is Alberta's GDP going? I'm gonna pull up this article, and in this, Alberta's GDP is forecasted to contract by 7.3 to 8.1 for 2020. Now, 25% of our uh, GDP comes from oil and gas. After all, we do have the third world's largest petroleum reserves. What are the three challenges facing Alberta right now? Now, before we get into this, I'm not trying to fear monger you guys, not my intention. I'm just gonna give it to you guys straight. And as a Calgary realtor, my job is to bring you relevant information affecting the real estate market so you can make the right decision. Now, I'm gonna pull up this article from Financial Post on November 24th and it's called the triple black swan. Sounds intense. But Alberta has been hit particularly hard because of our resource heavy economy. COVID-19 pandemic, the global drop in oil prices and demand, which means that investment in the energy sector is expected to drop this year and worldwide recession. As a result, we are forecast to end 2020 with an average of 11.6 unemployment rate. And we're not gonna return to the pre-pandemic levels until 2023. And to give you some context, the average unemployment rate in Canada between 1966 and 2020 is 7.6. Moving to some more positive news. Now there are some factors keeping the real estate market up. And despite all of what we just I just described, the real estate market has been pretty positive. It wasn't the doom and gloom that many were expecting. Yes, it was a slow spring when the lockdowns first happened, but our spring still came. It just came in the summer and in the fall and is continuing right through until now, which I will share with you in a moment when the market is supposed to slow down. Consider the three following things. Number one, we are in an environment with super low interest rates. You can find a five-year fixed or variable under 1.9%. Now, this is no doubt fueling the buying spree for buyers sitting on the fence. By the way, if you're looking for a mortgage in Alberta, I can help you navigate between what mortgage option is best for you. Just shoot me an email and my team and I will take care of you. Where are mortgage rates going? Now, here's the myth about rates. When a lot of people hear about rates going up, they're thinking about the prime rate. Now the prime rate only affects those people with a variable rate mortgage, a line of credit, or a home equity line of credit, uh, which is a line of credit secured against your home, which is one of the cheapest options of borrowing money. 
So if you have a fixed, it actually doesn't affect you. Now here is my biggest tip for you. If you're thinking about getting the five year fix and you want to know where it's going, check out the five year Canadian bond yields. It's closely correlated to the five year fixed rate. And if you wanna see where the three year fixed rate is going, then look at the three year Canadian bond yields. I'm gonna pull up a graph here of the five year Canadian bond yields. It's obvious that it's on a downward trend. Now we do see a pop above resistance in 2017, but it did start to decline in late 2018 through 2019 and then the pandemic happened. It's safe to say that the five year fixed rate will remain low for the time being. So you wanna make sure you keep your eyes on this and I'm gonna include a link in my description to this graph. Factor number two, the big mortgage deferral cliff did not actually happen, not yet anyway. Now, based on this article, it says that Canada's big six lenders reported that the majority of the loan payment deferrals have actually started to pay back down their debts. Number three, savings are at an all time high. Now I'm gonna show you this article by CBC News from September 11th, and it shows that savings has been the highest since 1965 with a savings rate of 28.2%. Now, obviously this reduces expenses like daycare, mortgage payments, vacations, transportation, eating out, and it really gives options to people to lower their debt. Could these three factors along with social programs and potential future support from the government keep Alberta out of trouble, both economically and for real estate? And if it can, how long will it hold until we get back up on our feet without additional support? Looking ahead. Now, if there is a real estate market crash, the catalyst for that is going to be an increase in supply that outstrips demand. I'm looking at specifically bankruptcies. Now, I'm gonna show you an article from CBC that came out not too long ago. And this survey found that 17% of Albertans are considering filing for bankruptcy or a consumer proposal. Now the difference between bankruptcies and a consumer proposal is that consumer proposals do not require the consumers to get rid of their assets, including their homes. So the question now becomes, how much of that 17% is actually going to be bankruptcies where homeowners could be forced to sell their home? People have homes with families and they're gonna do anything they can to stay in their homes and prevent foreclosure as that is the last thing they wanna do. Now, the truth about supply. You can't paint a broad stroke for supply and demand for the entire real estate market, like a city or for all types of homes, but rather each price point of homes are its own market. Think of this triangle as the real estate market and at the top are the highest end homes. In a down market, the highest priced homes will always be affected first and the price drop will go down to the second tier. Now the buyers at the second tier are going to notice and most likely move up. And this cycle will happen until we reach a price point level where there's an equilibrium for demand and supply. Everything else below won't be affected by the market as demand and supply is at an equilibrium. So it's important for you to see what market trends are happening in your specific area so you know if the same trend is applicable. Oh, and since we're talking about high-end homes, check out our latest video where we take you on a tour of a $6.8 million luxury condo in downtown Calgary. If this makes sense to you, we would love your support for this channel by hitting that like button. Go ahead and do that now. It really helps out this channel and we would love you for that. The Calgary real estate market for November, 2020. What happened? I'm gonna go through the stats really quickly and give you some advice for buyers and sellers and I'm gonna try and keep it short and sweet. In summary, we had an incredible month. The narrative from the last few months is still continuing, despite that we normally see activity taper off at this time of the year. But Calgary as a whole ended up 25% more in sales than the same time last year. And as a Calgary realtor, I am seeing an uptick in activity. Let's talk about sales. Okay, so for detached homes, we are up 25% more which were continuing the strong momentum from last month. Semi-detached homes, 
50%, five zero, our highest performer by far. The row and townhomes, uh, they're up by 24%, and they're following the trend of detached homes right now. And apartments, they turned a corner and they started to see a positive increase from negative territory at 12% positive in sales showing activity now this is important because it gives us an indication of future sales that could happen and it's been very strong showing 155 percent increase from last year inventory has been dropping and as you can see by this graph which shows the inventory day by day from the last month there's been a significant inventory drop from the start of the month to the end Overall, we saw 6.7% less new inventory and total inventory is sitting 16% less than last year. Great news for sellers. Pricing. For the six months straight, we've seen benchmark price increase by 1.6% to $423,600. Now, what all of these numbers are showing us is that the pandemic is not really putting a ton of downward pressure on our housing market. Advice for buyers. Now, as we continue into the holiday season and the new year, we're gonna see a lot of inventory drop off because demand is still very high. So if you see something you like, jump on it right away. Ensure that you have a pre-approval in place, that you understand the, how the offer process works, the next steps, people to call, documents to sign, and keep your offer expiry time on your offer short, meaning the same day. You don't want to have it expire the next day because it opens up the seller to get other offers and then you'd be competing. And nobody wants that. Advice for sellers. Now, I'm gonna speak to condo owners. If you're not a condo owner, but you know someone, make sure you share this video because this can be valuable information for them. Now, as a Calgary realtor, I'm getting a ton of calls from condo owners wondering if they should sell or rent because everyone is losing money on their condo right now if they bought in the last five years. If you're thinking about selling now or waiting later, then we have to take it back to what I mentioned earlier, which is the economic cycle based on GDP growth. Now, remember, I mentioned that when GDP starts growing, it takes about 18 months for real estate prices to go up. So using that model, if you think that it's gonna be two years until the GDP starts growing, then if we add 18 months to that, then it's actually gonna be three and a half years until we start seeing prices going up. Now, the one thing that you have to know is you have to understand where your exit price is. So let's just say you have a condo and you wanna sell it for $50,000 more. Well, based on that model, is it possible for your condo to increase in value of $50,000 or whatever price that you want to exit out at in three and a half years time. And the two things that you have to consider in that situation is, am I willing and able to hold on to my condo until then? And number two, will I have any financial troubles making those payments? To all other sellers, it's really looking good for you guys. If you price your property well at market expectations, you will sell your property, but you can't be greedy. Now ensure that your property shows well, do your repairs, stage it, and make sure you have professional photos. Think of listing your home as a beauty pageant. You want it to look the best so that you can get the most eyes on your property. Our next video will be episode two of our infill series, where we're gonna talk about the ins and outs of buying an infill, the different options of buying, and what you can expect to pay for an infill. Now, if you missed infill episode one, you can watch it right here. 87% of our viewers are not subscribers. And if you've watched this pathetic video all the way until now, then you're clearly interested in hearing what this elf has to say about real estate and giving you advice. Either way, as Calgary Realtors, we are big on educational and current content. So if you want more, then make sure you subscribe and hit that notification bell. I mean, why wouldn't you? I got a tool belt for my hammer, my screwdriver, even have a little uh, wrench. 
Happy holidays, guys. Now, if you excuse me, I gotta go help Santa put some gifts together.